relax. We'll be okay. Notes 29, fundamental theorem of calculus. Sometimes they don't put the O, they just call it FTC. Uh, and then it's broken up into two sections, part one, part two. But they're not, I mean, it's not relax. It's just, okay. Ready? All right. So look what it says here. It says uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. They tell us this integrand from A to X, and they call it F of T dt, and they call it capital F. They just labeled it capital F. And they're telling us, what does that mean? So they took the derivative of this guy, and they came up with the same inside here. So this is what proves that this means antiderivatives. So if the derivative gives us the inside expression, then the integral symbol without taking a derivative must be the antiderivative. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. And I sometimes, okay, is it required to do the proof? No. But without doing the proof, this whole symbol, just doing antiderivatives is just magic. And I don't, I'm not a fan. You guys know I'm not a fan of magic. Well, I am. I love magic. But I'm not a fan of like, like, oh, we just do it because we do it. Like, I want you guys to know why. That makes sense? Okay. So here's the proof. And don't worry. I'm going to make the proof easy for you guys. So look, here's the proof. And then they continue it, and they're like, oh, look, some x value between x and x plus h. Boom. And then it continues. We can therefore continue our proof by letting blah. And boom. <laughs> and then it continues. And then look for some. And then it just got f of x. And then they go, yeah, so look, the derivative of this integrand from a to x is just f of x. Does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> All right, we're going to do that same proof, but with pictures, because I know you guys love pictures. All right, relax, relax. So what is this proof saying? That the derivative of this integrand, notice that the upper limit is an x, the derivative, and that you have a constant in the bottom, the derivative of this integrand is just f of x. So we just change that f of t to an f of x. Yay or nay? Okay, let's go slowly by what we know. What do we know? We know that this integrand stands for what? Start with the letter A. Yeah, area. Yeah, we don't know antiderivative yet, technically. Area under a curve. curve. So I'm just going to draw some curve. I'm going to call this A. And I'm going to call this X. So the area under the curve, at the moment, from A to X, all that area is just f of x. So that's what they call it. And this curve is f of t. Are we OK? Nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy. All right. Let's see. What's the first step? What did they do? Oh, they added an h. OK. So here we go. I am going to add an h distance. So I'm going to say from there to here is h. So, and I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to use LRAM. I used LRAM. So that means this coordinate right there is x plus h. Have I freaked anyone out? I haven't done anything. All right. If this is f of x, then the distance from here all the way to there must be f of x plus h. Would you agree? Yeah. So then this, I can rewrite this integrand as a from, I started a, and I'm going to go all the way to x plus h of this curve. Is everyone okay with that? What's up? I haven't separated anything. What did I, what did I, what are you talking about? Oh, please, I want you to ask. Ask me again. Oh, I'm looking at what they did. I'm looking at what they did. I see uh, f of x plus h here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at what they did. So if they have, if this is my f of x, then that's definitely f of x plus h. Are we so far okay? Okay. If I take 
f of x plus h is this guy. If I go, uh, how should I do it? Okay, I'll do it like this. If I go f of x plus h and I subtract f of x, that will leave me with this rectangle right here. Well, what color should I use? Black. That would give me this rectangle right there, won't it? Okay. Yeah, 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 it will. So I know that f of x plus h is this integrand, a x plus h f of t dt. And I'm going to subtract the area under the curve from a to x of f of t dt. I, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I know that this integrand is nothing more than the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. So catch up to there. Nothing crazy, right? Okay. okay. This guy, do you agree, is just this expression with capital letters. And that's what that is. It's that, that area shaded in, in black, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and rewrite it. I'm going to do this. f of x plus h minus f of x. And I'm going to, I guess I'm going to use the approximate symbol for now. It's going to be approximately, I'm not going to write this integrand. I'm going to write the area of this curve. If I'm using LRAM, if I'm using LRAM, this height is dictated by, what's the height of that rectangle there? F, not f of t, f of, because f of t is the f of x. And the width is just going to be, what's x plus h minus x? Yeah, just h, good job, just h, do that. Yeah, so close. So close. All right. I notice, let's see, what did they do? I see a 1 over h, they divide by h. Okay. All right. I can move that h out of there by just simply dividing by h and h. Do you guys see that? So now I have f of x plus h minus f of x over h I'm not I'm not writing the approximate f of x just yet because I'm gonna write something right before it are we okay all right I'm gonna write look what I'm gonna write right so right now I just have I have f of x on the right hand side because I divided by h right it's approximate right now but if I make h approach 0 so because remember we're doing L ramp if I make h approach 0 won't this be perfectly right on f of x. But what do I got to make h approach? Zero. So if h approaches zero, here's what I'm saying. Sorry, guys. I need to find a way to move the part of this. If h approaches zero, this gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That's h. And if I'm right on it, if h is zero, ain't I right on x? So that would just be f of x? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's all it is. That's all it is. So I'm going to write. Look what I'm going to write. I'm going to write the word limit as h approaches 0, and then this will equal nothing more than just f of x. So here's the moment of truth. Let's see here. Are we okay? Yes. Nothing crazy, right? All right. What does this look like to you? Do you recall? Oh, yeah. it's, it's a definition of what? Derivative. Definition of derivative. So they have the capital F. That just means F prime. All that that I just circled means capital F prime. So the derivative, remember that what was capital F? Capital F was just this integrand, right? So the derivative of this is just nothing more than F of X. I'm just, look, I'm just writing it there like that. So what does that mean? So d dx of this integral, or this integrand, a to the x of f of t dt. Oh, what was that? Do we have a duck? What? 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 Sorry. Sorry, YouTube. If nothing more than f of x. 
That's all it means. Cool or not cool? Notice, here's what you should observe. Notice that it does not matter what that lower limit is. You don't care about that lower limit. You just, you, well, it better be a constant though. As my upper limit must be that variable x. Must, those must match. If it's not an x, we have to use chain rule. And don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna practice that. How do we feel? Did you guys like that proof? That everything they did in the first two pages, you can do it right there with that drawing. Yeah, I think they assume that everyone's a math major and they can just read that. And I mean, I'm sure once you have enough experience, you'll be able to read it and follow along. But did that make sense to you guys? Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go, guys. We're just gonna pr we're just gonna practice. Do you have to know the theorem to do this? No. It'd be nice if you did, so you don't have questions like why did it not? Remember, did it matter what the constant was? What a was? No. Look what this is telling me. Letter A. I look at it, do I have a constant at the lower limit? Yes, I do, it's pi. Do I have the variable x at the top? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm taking the derivative of this integrand, it's just gonna be cosine x. That's all it is, it's whatever f, the integral is, f of x, f of t. I have an integral, I change the t to a x, that's all you're doing. All right, let's look at the next one, look at letter b. Do I have a constant in the bottom? Do I have an x at the top? Yep. I'm taking the derivative with respect to what? x. Perfect. Everything matches. I can just, it's just the inside. Change the t to a what? 1 plus x squared. That's all you're doing. Yay or nay? Yay. All right. Let's keep going. No, don't be scared. Okay. Here's what we're going to do on this one. Ready? Relax. Relax. It says y equals, do I have a constant in the bottom? Okay, notice I do have a variable at the top, but it is no longer x, it is what? So now chain rule comes in. It doesn't make it any harder. Relax. It's simple. Look how simple it is. This means that I want to do a what? I want to, no, no, just a derivative. I want the derivative of this. So y prime, or you know what? Let me write dy dx, because they wrote dy dx. DY, look, guys, focus, focus. dy dx equals, focus, guys. I'm taking the derivative of this integrand. You change the t to whatever you have up here. Cosine of x squared. Close it, but you're not done because that wasn't an x. It was an x squared. So now times 2x, the derivative of x squared. That's your chain rule. So dy dx is just 2x, 2x cosine of x squared. Cool or not cool? Yeah, it's not bad at all. All right. You guys ready? Go to the next page. Relax, relax, guys, relax. Yes. Ask. I'm finding the derivative of this integrand. I, I can, the integral expression, I know you're used to finding derivative of the polynomials. I am finding the derivative and they wrote this, this, this y equals as an integral. So you can literally plot this in the calculator, in the graphing calculator, and it will plot something. So like, what I'm thinking, ah. what I'm thinking in my brain is like, oh, we're just finding the derivative of cosine t. Like, what I'm thinking is, like, why is it going to be like negative sine? Because that's not the derivative of the integral of cosine t. That's the derivative of cosine t. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, here's, what, here's the difference, uh, Espinosa. D dx of cosine of x is negative sine x, but I'm not taking the derivative of cosine x. D dx, I'm taking the derivative of the integral of cosine t. And then I do what I did. Here's the proof of here's the proof of what I did. Look, they titled this capital F is this, and look what I ha what I got when I did it. The derivative of that capital thing was just the inside expression, always. So we didn't care what that lower limit was as long as the upper limit is an x. So, okay, let's go. Did I, are you satisfied? Okay, look at this one right here, guys. Focus, focus, focus. Do I have an upper limit of x? No. Do I have a lower limit of a constant? No, but luckily for me, they are reversed. Do I know properties? Yes. yes. Can I make this look like an x in the top and a constant in the bottom? 
Yeah, so I'm going to rewrite this. So rewrite y equals, what do I write? Uh, integral. And I put, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm writing y equals. I'm not taking the derivative yet. All right, y equals, what do I put in the, in the bottom limit? Five. So then if I put a five, I put a one in the front of this? Negative. What do I put in the top? X. Does everyone know why I put a negative in the front? Because you reverse a pole. Yeah, perfect. So then I put 3t sine t. We haven't taken a derivative yet. Are we okay so far? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm ready. Now we're ready. dy dx equals, I put a negative in the front, and then wherever I have a t, I'm just going to put a what? An x. 3x sine x. Done. How do we feel? Okay. Okay. All right. Look at this one here. Relax, guys. Relax. Can I take a derivative of this expression? Yes or no? Right now? Yeah. What does your gut tell you? No. Why not? Because I don't have a constant in the bottom. So let's break it up like this. Break it up into pieces. Remember this. We're using properties, guys. We're using properties of integrands. So look, y equals, remember, the integrand just means area under the curve. Area under the curve. And I'm going to start, I have to start at 2x no matter what, right? Uh, so 2x, but I'm going to stop at a constant. Any constant you want. You know what? You want to use a letter? A. I'm going to say A is a constant. I'm going to go 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. You don't have to choose, you can choose, you could have chosen, you, you could have chosen a number, you could have chosen one, you could have chosen five, you could have chosen ten, doesn't matter, choose something. Cool or not cool? Okay, where this one stops, remember, that's not what I have, plus where that one stops, the other one better begin. So that one stops at A, so this one better start at A, and I'm going to go all the way to what? X squared. I'm just using the properties, guys, the properties of integrands. Are we cool? cool? Okay, now, before I take my derivative, I'm not taking my derivative yet, I'm going to rewrite this in a way where I have my lower limit as a constant and my upper limit as a variable. So y equals, I'm going to switch these limits, so that means what I put in the front? Negative, Negative integral, a to 2x, 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt, plus integral a to x squared 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. Now we are finally ready. Now we are finally ready. I'm going to write dy dx equals, I replace the t with whatever you have up there, 1 over 2 plus e to the, not, not x, but 2x, and I'm not done, Chain rule, it wasn't an x, it was a 2x, so I got to multiply by 2. The whole shebang multiplied by 2. What's the question, Guerrero? Yes, it is negative. Thank you. Or else it's wrong. Yeah, you guys got to gotta hook me up because sometimes I mess up. There's a negative right in the front, guys. You can put it with the 1 plus, because we're going to rewrite it anyways. Again, this one is 1 over 2 plus e to the x squared times, am I done? times what? 2x. So here's me rewriting it. So I'm just going to write y prime because I'm running out of real estate. y prime equals, I'm going to write, I'm going to put the positive one first, 2x over 2 plus e to the x squared minus, I don't know how to say negative, 1 over 2 plus e to the, oh, no, no, not 1, 2. 2 over 2 plus e to the 2x. Done. How do we feel? Not bad? Okay. All right. Don't worry. Look, we're going to stop right here. Or no, we're going to continue, but we're going to pause real fast. Okay. I'm going to give you this formula in a, in a better way. I don't know why they... Well, I do know. They're just authors. They're just typing it the way they think everyone learns. Okay. Yeah, I put a lot of thought into this, guys. I, I rewrote this formula. Don't worry. It's, it's a simple rewrite. It wasn't like a super blown out, blow your mind out. Okay. All this is saying, look what it's saying. It doesn't. I don't have a derivative in the front. It says if f is continuous at every point a, b, and f is an antiderivative, capital F is an antiderivative of f. Why do they use capital F for everything? 
on AB then blah, 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 is blah. So what they're saying is this. We already proved the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, that if we take a derivative of that symbol, that integral, that it's itself. So if we don't take a derivative, then it makes sense. Or remember, think about it. If we take a derivative of something, it's itself. So if we don't take a derivative, it must mean that I got to do a antiderivative. Does that make sense? Like if I don't take the derivative and get the expression itself, so don't take the derivative. So if I don't, if I take away the derivative, then that means that symbol must mean antiderivative. Because if I take the derivative of that stuff, I get the expression itself. Does that make sense? The inverse operations type of thing. Okay, so here it is. If you turn the page, I wrote it simpler for you. Yes. So look, the a, no, no, stop. The integral from a to b of f prime is nothing more than the antiderivative evaluated at b. When it's the antiderivative evaluated at A. That's all it is. Now this time, what's different? I have constants on both of them. You can take, you can put an X, you can put an X, but you would just have an expression in terms of X minus some constant. Cool or not cool? Okay, we're gonna go slow. Look, we're gonna do our first one right now. We're gonna go really slow. Ready? All right, here we go. Integral negative 1 to 3 of x cubed plus 1, close it, dx, equals, I'm going to go really slow. What is the antiderivative of x to the cube? No, 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 not derivative, antiderivative. Add 1, divide by that number. So what, what is it? Perfect. You can say 1 fourth x to the fourth. x to the fourth over 4. Plus, what's the antiderivative of 1? One? 1x. One well, I would put a plus c if I don't have any limits, uh, but I have limits. Mm -hmm. So if you have limits, you don't have to put the plus c. If I have more than one expression, I would put both of them like that in brackets. Put a lower limit of negative 1, an upper limit of 3. You can also do this. Okay, I'll stop. Let me slow down. Okay. You can also do this. This line means evaluated at in the math world, also in programming. Negative 1 to 3 like that. But uh, when you have more than one term, and it's still correct, you can still follow it, but usually this is the habit. When you have more than one term, you do that. So everyone knows that it's both of those terms that you have to do upper minus lower. Does that make sense? Okay, here we go. You guys ready? I'm going to go slow. Nothing crazy. I'm going slow, guys. Look, 3 to the 4th divided by 4, giant parenthesis, plus 3, close it, minus, giant parenthesis, negative 1 to the 4th divided by 4, plus negative 1, upper minus lower. You are done with calculus. Now it's just, can I do algebra? Or arithmetic. It's not even algebra. Can I do arithmetic? I think we can do this. 3 times 3 is 9, and I'm going to do that again. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 divided by 4, does that, is that a pretty number? No, right? Uh, 3 times 4 is 12. I'm doing common denominator. 12 over 4 is 3, no? Okay. So I have that. Minus negative 1 of the 4th is 1, so 1 fourth. Minus, and I'm going to do that 4 over 4. Let's see what I got. 81, 91, and a 293. 93 over 4 minus... Four, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so uh, minus a negative, so plus 3 fourths. So I get, if I don't see any mistakes, I get 96 over 4. And I think that does go into it. 96 divided by 4 is 24. Yeah. Because 25 would have been, 25 times 4 is 100. And 96 is 4 from 100, so 24. Do you see how we did it? If you were to type this in your calculator, would you get 24? Yes, you would. Uh, we already know how to use the calculator, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. I put it, Here's how you use it. Okay, let's use the calculator. So just to, just to see that it's the same. Huh. All right. All right, how do you... Oh, this is a heart using polar, right? It's a limicon. You guys thought about that? All right, let me reset. Seven, one, two, no, two. Okay, here we go. Math. All the integrals and derivatives are going to be found under math. 
you go to number nine. It stands for function integral, function numeric integration. What was my lower limit? Negative one. What was my upper limit? Three. Three. And then I just typed the expression. What was it? X plus one. Put an X in there. And up. Oh, delete. For the DX here. And there it is. Try, try to do it by hand at first, guys. 60% of your exam is without a calculator, so try to get beast at it. When the, you'll see, we'll have moments where you need a calculator, but for now, let's not. Okay, we're almost done. I think this is the last page. We are so close. We're probably we can probably do 75% of the exam now. So exam example five, using the graph of f to analyze h of x. So h of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt. The graph of a continuous function f with domain, so this is f, so I'm going to put f, with domain 0 to 8 is shown to the right. Let h be the function defined by, okay. So I have a function defined by h. Nothing crazy. Are we still okay? All right. And it's an integral function, no big deal. All right. Find h of 1. All right. hey, no, 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 don't yawn. That's a demerit. <laughs> you don't have to apologize, man. I'm 100% joking, miss. Uh, you too, I'm 100% joking. I'm not going to write a demerit for a yawn. Uh, 1 to 1 of f of t dt. 0. Have you moved? So it's just 0. That's all it is. Well, it told me, h of 1. Wherever there's an x, you put a 1. All right. Is h of 0 positive or negative? Justify your answer. All right, I'm going to go h of 0 equals integral from 1 to 0 of f of t dt. Is it positive or is it negative? We don't know the, the actual value because we don't know the function. So here's 1 and here's 0. And it's telling me area into the curve from 1 to 0. So here's my area. Positive or negative? Why is it negative? Oh, wait, because it's going from 0 to 1, not 1 to 2. You're going from 1 to 0, not from 0 to 1. Remember that this is your start, and this is your stop. So I'm going backwards. Because the area is above the x-axis, but you're going backwards, it's going to be negative. Does that make sense? Or does that not make sense? Yeah. No? OK. All right, let's just do something simple. So check it out. Look, something an uh, area that's so simple to calculate that everyone can do it. Here's 3. And it's always 3 and 0 to 1. So this area is 3. Yes or no? If I were to tell you integral from 0, oh, no, not 0 to 1, 1 to 0 of 3. And that sounds silly to do antiderivative for this, but let's go ahead and do it. So look, check it out. What's the antiderivative of 3? Three? 3x. I'm going to put a line, 1 to 0. I do upper minus lower. 3 times 0 minus 3 times 1. OMG, I get a negative 3. This is a negative 3. If I were to go integral from 0 to 1 of 3 f of t dt or f of whatever, I get 3x. Evaluate it from 0 to 1. I do upper minus lower. 3 times 1 minus 3 times 0. Oh, that's just 3. I guess I could have gone 3 times 1 minus 0 or whatever. And look, that one's positive now. Why? So what's the difference? Look, it's just a rectangle. What's the difference? Well, the 0 to 1, I start at 0 and I stop at 1. From 0 to 1, I have a positive 3, but if I go backwards from 1 to 0, you start here and you end here, so you get a negative 3 because you're doing literally this. That's the area, and you're doing 1 minus 0. <laughs> 0 minus 1, sorry. You know what I mean? Like, because you're going backwards. Cool or not cool? Okay. Do we see why it's negative now? All right. I didn't confuse anyone, did I? Okay. Did I enlighten you there? Or, or or do you think it's magic? It's not magic. What's up, miss? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, you got it, Chris. You got it. All right, here we go. Let's see if you know calculus. Look at this. Find the value of x for which h of x is a maximum. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Is this graph h of x? No. no. It's f of x or f of t. Or it doesn't matter what you call it. You okay? When does h have a max? Give me the definition. I, when do I have a max? When does a function have a max? When what happens? When what changes? When the something changes from positive. Oh, yeah, what is that something? So what? When when does f have a max? Not I'm not even talking about this. When does f have a max? Now when f of x goes from positive to negative. Oh man. Yes, guys, the function has a max when the derivative of that function, whatever that name of the function is, goes from negative from positive to negative. If the remember guys, derivative means slope. If the slope is positive, that means your original function is increasing. If the slope is negative, that means your original function is decreasing. Think about it. Increasing to decreasing is a max. So whenever the derivative goes from positive to negative, the derivative of whatever that function is, yes or no? OK, so I need to find where does h of x have a maximum? Whenever the derivative of h goes from positive to negative. Now look, h of x is known right now as the integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. Do we know that much? Because they get that's what well, they got yeah, given. Are we okay? H prime of x is nothing more than what? If just f of x. So right now, look at the function I have. This function that you're looking at, it is f of x. But it is also what? The derivative. It's also derivative. h prime equals f. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at the h prime graph. Yay or nay? Yeah. On the h prime graph, which happens to be f, where does it go from positive to negative? At 4. That's, that's where I have a maximum at. So I'm going to write h of x has a relative max at x equals 4 since h prime, which equals f, changes from positive to negative at x equals 4. Does that make sense? How do we feel? Right, really, actually, that's also your absolute max. Because I'm going up, 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 and then from there I keep going down forever. How do we feel, guys? All right. Find the x value for which h of x is a minimum. You do have a relative minimum at the endpoint of zero, but that's for another time. So let's do the open intervals. I'm just going to put open intervals. Okay, I have a minimum. Oh, uh, you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't matter because it's a simple question, anyways. Okay. You have two relative minimums. The only candidates are this. So think about it. Remember, this is for h. Yeah, for h. This is for h. h goes up, 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 until you hit 4. So h of 0 is a candidate. That's a candidate. So h of 0, uh, or it just says minimum, right? Is a relative minimum. Is a relative minimum. You have a minimum at x equals 0. And which one's the other one? I keep going down, 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 down until I hit six, seven, eight. So my absolute maximum happens at x equals eight. So x equals zero and x equals eight are minimums or relative minimums. Now some textbooks will not say you have a relative minimum and an endpoint, so we just got to be careful there. Uh, absolute minimum. Which one is the absolute minimum, guys? Which one do you think it is? The one at 8. Absolute min at x equals 8. I'm going to delete this question in the future because it's, or at least make a, be, make a graph that's better because this one sucks. You also have a minimum when the derivative goes from negative to positive. Uh, so let me put here for good notes. Uh, delete. 
for change graphics for future. Sorry, YouTube. I'll do a better job. Okay. Here we go. You guys ready? All right. Don't worry. We're almost done. This is the last one. Find the x coordinates of all points of inflection in the graph of H. I love it. Look at this, guys. We already know. You guys already know. You guys already did this. You already know. You already know that the first derivative of this was nothing more than f of x. You know that, right? I have points of inflection whenever the second derivative changes signs. And you don't even have to go that far. You can actually continue to do h prime. I'll slow down because it is where we had a, a really hard time. h prime prime changes from positive to negative or negative to positive whenever h prime goes from what to what? Increases or decreasing or vice versa. Wherever this graph has max and min. Does that make sense? So look, this in red, h prime prime is negative because h prime is decreasing. This in red, h prime prime is negative because h prime is decreasing. This in purple, h prime h prime prime is positive because h prime is increasing. Well, all this was decreasing. And this in purple, h prime prime is positive because h prime is increasing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this in red is part of the decreasing. So where does h have a point of inflection? I have how many of them? I have three. Where, where, and where? Not zero. One, one, three, and six. So I'm going to write h of x has points of inflection at x equals one, comma, where else? Uh, three and six. Since you always want to use the graph that you're given, we have the h prime graph. Since h prime, which equals f, so let me write that, connect it. h prime, which equals f, changes from, and you always want to do the first one first. So what, what's the first one? Decrease to increase? Changes from decreasing to increasing, and vice versa. at those specific x values. Full credit. How do we feel? OK. Take a five minute break. Go to the restroom, do your thing. I'll have uh, one pager. All you're doing is Fundamental Theorem of Calculus 1. I, I hit you with a lot today because I wanted to see how you're going to do on the mock exam and I wanted to give you a chance to like get those questions correct uh, but we'll continue this we'll continue this uh, next week, next week.